you think of snails, you probably think of those little things you find in your garden. Or maybe an order of escargot from a fancy <laughs> French restaurant. But have you ever seen one that can grow up to eight inches long? NPR reports that Florida officials are planning to eradicate the giant African land snail, which the U.S. Department of Agriculture calls one of the most damaging snails in the world. It's a highly invasive agricultural pest that can feed on over 500 types of plants, the USDA says. The species has been eradicated in Florida twice before, in 1975 and 2021. It costs millions of dollars to get rid of them. And aside from being an agricultural pest, they also carry a rat lungworm, which is a parasite that causes meningitis in humans. And when they don't consume enough calcium from the soil, they munch through plaster and stucco structures. The snail reproduces about 1,200 eggs in a single year, the USDA says. They can grow up to 8 inches in length and nearly 5 inches in diameter, or about the size of an average adult fist. These types of snails are illegal to distribute, sell, and ship across state lines. If you see a giant African snail, officials are asking you to call your State Department of Agriculture. When you look at a bee, and when you look at a fish, I'm sure you think to yourself, whoa, there are no differences between these two living things at all. They're virtually identical, right? GreenMatters.com reports that the state of California recently made major strides in fighting for the rights of bees by classifying them as fish under the Endangered Species Act. So in California, bees are fish. Uh, with hmm. me so far? Pamela Flick from the Defenders of Wildlife explains that bees and other pollinators are integral to healthy ecosystems. But up until now, California's ESA covered species like birds, mammals, and fish, but left out threatened species like insects. But since the definition of fish includes invertebrates and amphibians, bees are taking on the classification of invertebrates. And based on this ruling, fish don't need to only include marine animals, and the classification can also include insects like bees. Although climate change in general is wiping out plant species and therefore destroying bee habitats, farmers are a leading contributor to the destruction of bee populations due to the pesticides that commercial farmers tend to use. The combination of the destruction of their homes, their food sources, and the use of poisonous pesticides makes it incredibly hard for bees to survive. The Center for Food Safety said in a press release that one out of every three bites of food we eat comes from a crop pollinated by bees, making this court decision critical to protecting our food supply. Homing pigeons are supposed to be good at finding their way. But when a pigeon named Bob from the UK went missing, I'm not sure that anybody expected him to turn up some 4,000 miles away. Lad Bible reports that Bob was released from Guernsey, an island in the English Channel, one day, and was expected to make his way to the northeast of England. But he went missing, and no one was sure what happened to him. Meanwhile, way over in Monroe County, Alabama, an elderly man discovered a bird in his garden that would not leave. He called up a local animal shelter who came along and removed the bird. They then checked the microchip and band on the bird, discovering to their shock that it was supposed to be on the other side of the ocean in England. The microchip led them to a web page called North of England Homing Union. They then made contact with the owner named Alan Todd to tell him that they had found Bob 4,000 miles away. The shelter said that the bird was fine, apart from being a little underweight and having some oil on his feathers. Todd believes that the bird, which may be worth around a thousand British pounds, landed on a ship that then flew it across the Atlantic. He's been reunited virtually with Bob and plans to travel over to the USA to get him back. Well, you know what they say, a sparrow in the hand is better than the pigeon on the roof. That actually has no relevance to the story, but pigeon sayings are hard to come by. The 
This will make you think twice about what to do with your old bread. The Houston Chronicle reports that a Texas homeowners association has filed a lawsuit against two retirees for allegedly feeding ducks in their spare time. The Lakeland Village Community Association is seeking a court-ordered injunction prohibiting George and Kathleen Rowe for continuing to feed the ducks, as well as monetary relief of up to $250,000. If the Rows are found in violation of the association's rules and can't afford to pay any potential damages, the association is asking that they be allowed to foreclose their home. Kathleen Rowe told the Huffington Post, we didn't have the $250,000, so we have to be prepared in case that's what it's going to cost. The couple stated that they believe the ducks had been dumped in the area without necessary survival skills, prompting the two retirees to feed them. However, the association claims that the Rose habit has impacted other residents, with the waterfowl allegedly causing extensive property damage. Local homeowners claim that the ducks tear up gardens with their beaks and routinely defecate on homes, vehicles, and other private properties. The lawsuit states that the violations are causing imminent harm and irreparable injury. An environmentalist told the Chronicle that the dynamic is not unexpected and recommended that people neither purchase or abandon domesticated ducklings, nor feed waterfowl already present in an area. The Huffington Post notes that the United States Department of Agriculture generally warns against feeding ducks and other wildlife, saying that human food is not healthy for ducks. Furthermore, large amounts of ducks can produce up to a pound of feces per day, potentially polluting landscapes and local waterways. A pound a day. You talk about a literal sh show. If you want to see all our videos about real news stories that are funny, stupid, or weird, click the subscribe button below. I mean, hey, my cat's gotta eat.